Hey all, Taylor here, and I have another Alienware AW3225QF video for you. Today I'm going to be talking about all things SDR and HDR, because whether you're thinking about purchasing this monitor for yourself, or you have purchased it already, the settings menus are complex, and they can be quite confusing on what is the best configurations to pick. So I've condensed a few down that I think you might enjoy. I'm going to take you through them step by step, get this thing factory reset, and we're going to go through it together. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this video is not sponsored. It was completely produced and funded by myself. So if you want to show your support, hit that like button and consider subscribing. It goes a long way of supporting the channel and I do really appreciate it. Before we get into the settings, I think it's important to mention to check that the monitor screen is okay when you unbox this monitor. Mine came with this padded foam. It was one of the earlier packagings and I did have smudges at the top, which luckily were not scratches. So using a microfiber cloth, I was just able to rotate in a counterclockwise or clockwise rotation and wipe those smudges off. And my screen luckily was undamaged. But if yours is damaged, if it does have scratches, I do recommend you contact Dell to get a replacement. You should also check the contents of the box. You should get an HDMI 2.1 cable in the box. This is going to be very important. And also a power cable that is arguably most important. You will also get a DisplayPort to DisplayPort 1.4 cable, as well as a USB-B to USB-A. And this is going to be necessary for connecting peripherals to those USB-A and USB-C port and also updating the firmware on the monitor. One thing that isn't included, that really should be, is a USB-C to DisplayPort 1.4 cable because if you're planning on running this monitor with a Mac that doesn't have HDMI 2.1 support, then you're gonna need something like this and it is not included in the box. Also included in the box is a factory calibration chart so that you can easily check what Dell has calibrated on your monitor. Here is mine for an example. HDMI or DisplayPort 1.4, which cable should you pick? Well, in terms of visual fidelity, they're both gonna offer you the same. They both support 4K at 240 Hertz with DSC, with the only difference being that HDMI 2.1 does support VRR, so I typically go with that. And also, if you are planning on connecting a soundbar, you're also going to want to make sure that you are connecting to the HDMI 1 port because that is the only one that is going to support eARC. What is very important is connecting the USB-B from the monitor to the USB-A to your PC. And don't mind this little adapter here, I just have it to USB-C because I'm out of USB-A ports. But we need to connect this right off the bat because what we're going to do is upgrade the firmware on this monitor. The latest firmware for this monitor as of this video is M2B104. And to check the firmware version on your monitor, you're going to go ahead and go to the menu. You're going to go to others down there at the bottom. And then you're just going to slide on over to the firmware. And there it is, M2B104. Now that you've confirmed your firmware version, go ahead and go to dell.com slash support, enter in your service tag and get that latest firmware downloaded. If you're having trouble doing this yourself, you can always check out my video that I have on updating a previous version of the firmware. Just go ahead and follow the same steps for the latest version on Dell's website. Let's start off by talking about SDR or standard dynamic range, which is the default configuration that this monitor comes in out of the box if you have the Windows HDR setting turned off. I recommend you go ahead and turn that off now because going forward we're going to be talking about SDR on this monitor. And out of the box you can open up the menu and you will see your preset modes as well as your smart HDR at the top. We don't have HDR enabled so smart HDR is irrelevant at this point. But if you go ahead and go up to your menu you're going to see your standard profile here in preset modes. Now there's a couple of presets. There's standard FPS, MOBA RTS, RPG, sports creator with configurations for DCI P3 color space, as well as sRGB color space. And as you change these, the monitor will change as well. And there's game one, two, and three, which are 
configured each the same and what those allow you to do is fine tune your image. I'm not going to be covering game one, two, and three today because that is rather advanced. You can explore that on your own. But let's go ahead and go to standard and just keep it there for a moment because standard is going to be the most color accurate of all these settings on my particular monitor. Your mileage may vary some with that depending on calibration out of the factory. They do differ a bit, but on mine standard is the most color accurate. And that really is the advantage of SDR. If you're coming from a monitor with a decent brightness level, you might notice that out of the box, this monitor is quite dim. And it is, it is currently set to 75% out of the box with a contrast of 75%. I recommend you leave the contrast at 75%, but I do recommend that you up the brightness. So it's gonna give you this warning saying that increasing the value will increase energy. So if energy is important to you and it's expensive, then you might want to consider that, but we're just going to dismiss it. You'll never see that message again and go ahead and crank it all the way to 100. So now at 100, you're going to be at around 250 nits. I'm going to hop into a game in SDR, but just to give you reference, I am using NVIDIA driver 551.2, which was released April 3rd. A crucial thing to check is that you're getting the full hertz out of this monitor. Sometimes when you initially set it up, it will default to 60. So just go ahead and to display settings, advanced display, and make sure that it is the full 240 hertz. Also, when you switch inputs on the monitor, it might also default to 60 or when you switch between SDR and HDR. So it is worth it whenever you're making those configuration changes to double check that you're getting the full 240 hertz. SDR looks very good in games. With the color accuracy, you're going to get a very, very vibrant image. And in that standard profile, it is going to look the best, in my opinion. I recommend you keep it at standard for SDR and every single color just pops. It looks absolutely amazing. Now for the fun part, HDR. SDR is pretty straightforward, but HDR can get a little complicated. It requires some settings that we're gonna have to change in Windows. And the first being navigating into the settings here and going to display. You're gonna scroll down to use HDR and currently it's set to off. Go ahead and click this on. Your screen is gonna flash. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that the image is washed out and that there was a Dolby Vision pop-up in the corner there. This is okay, we'll address these in a second, but go ahead and open HDR. And here is my settings. I have the um, Use HDR on, HDR Video Streaming on, and Auto HDR set to on. Now, out of the box, it's probably gonna be somewhere around 50 for SDR content brightness. I recommend you go ahead and Turn this all the way up to 100% to get the brightest image possible. And that's it for Windows settings for now. We're gonna revisit them later, but now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the on-screen display on the monitor and configure some settings there. So now that we're in HDR, some things have enabled in the on-screen display, and I just wanna get us familiar with those right now. So the preset modes, those are gonna stay the same, but what you'll notice is if you go down to the display tab, you are going to see that you have Dolby Vision and it is going to be set to bright. There are three configuration settings. There's bright, dark, game, and off as of the latest firmware. That wasn't there before the 1.103 firmware. So it's very important to update that to get that option. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn Dolby Vision off. It's going to flash but now Dolby Vision is completely off, which is going to enable this smart HDR setting here. And desktop means that your Windows settings on the desktop are controlling the HDR. And that's not really ideal. We wanna have the monitor really controlling those HDR tone maps. So first thing I want you to do is go ahead and we're gonna start off at HDR peak 1 which is going to have our maximum peak brightness at that 1000 nits that this monitor supports. In my particular case, if I go into my window settings here with HDR peak 1000, I'm getting a reported value of 993 nits. So now 
you're going to want to go ahead and you're going to calibrate this in Windows. So to do that, all you need to do is go to use HDR, this tab here, open that up and you will see HDR display calibration and clicking it is going to take you to a web page where you can download it. Go ahead and download it and it's going to give you an application that is on your computer called Windows HDR calibration. It might auto open, but if it doesn't, go ahead and open it here. And this is a wizard that is going to calibrate the HDR setting that we just applied to get the most out of it for Windows. So go ahead and hit get started. It's gonna take you through a series of screens. Just go ahead and match it to where those lines completely disappear like I have here. I'm upping the brightness here, lines disappeared. Do it again, lines disappeared. And then you're gonna to get to this color saturation and I found that a value of 70 is ideal. It's not too oversaturated, but it does give it the right amount of saturation. And once it's done, it's going to prompt for a name. I usually just leave it at the default, click finish, and the display has changed. So now you should notice that the desktop is a little more saturated. It doesn't look so washed out. And this is really gonna balance out your monitor because now we're using the power of the HDR Peak 1000 inside the monitor combined with the Windows calibration, which now is going to balance things out so that your desktop is looking less washed out and your HDR content is going to be popping. So let's go ahead and jump into how that looks. This is Ori Will of the Wisp and its HDR calibration in game is just phenomenal. With that peak HDR 1000, we are getting absolutely dark darks and Ori himself is just super bright. This is the perfect representation of this mode where we have that really dramatic gamut of very dark and very bright. And this is going to vary game to game based on how the developers have toned their HDR settings in game. So here in Ori, it looks really, really great. Now let's take a look at Baldur's Gate 3 in this HDR P1000 mode. Baldur's Gate 3 is mastered in HDR very, very well, but in my opinion, I don't prefer it. And I'm gonna explain why. HDR Peak 1000 is all about hitting those 1000 nits of brightness, which look very, very bright. And you can see it up here in the chandelier where the chandelier is extremely bright. And then down here, it is darker. And you can also see it in the candles here. But when I scroll up on the screen, here the chandelier is in full view and it is extremely bright. But the UI down here has changed darker. Watch the UI as I move away the UI gets brighter, and then closer to the chandelier, the UI gets darker. And that's because the screen is adjusting the brightness based on what is on the screen, because the screen can't span 1000 nits across the whole display, but it can in these tiny little pockets, which are represented here by the candle, which means when those are super bright, the area around it gets darker. And I think this is extremely dramatized in HDR Peak 1000. And if that's your thing, that's fine. If that doesn't bother you and you prefer this, that's totally okay. But for me personally, I think this is a little bit too dramatic. And as I'm moving here, it's just a little bit distracting. And this is where those other settings come in. That's why I wanted to show you HDR Peak 1000 first, because it is an extreme example and the best example of HDR on this monitor. But there is another version called HDR True Black which gets up to 400 nits of brightness. And do, we're gonna do the same Windows calibration here for this setting as well. And what this setting does is it, it reduces the drama between the highs and lows so that you get a more balanced image. Now that dramatic dimming that was once apparent in Boulder Skate is now much less apparent. You can still see it a bit, but in my opinion, it is far less distracting and the candles still look very bright. There's still more smart HDR settings on this monitor like movie and game, but I'm not gonna dive into those. I'll let you explore those on your own because I do think that the HDR True Black and the HDR Peak 1000 
are going to be ones that you're going to be most interested in. So let's move on from those and talk about a hot topic. Dolby Vision. I think Dolby Vision is actually the best balance in HDR content and SDR content. So let's check that out. To enable Dolby Vision, it's super easy. Just go into the menu here. You're gonna go to display and for Dolby Vision, just set it here. Now there's bright, dark, and game. I haven't noticed the difference between game and bright, but dark is definitely, well, it's dark. I just set it on game and it's going to flash the screen and then come back with your image with a notification in the corner saying Dolby Vision is on. We're back in Baldur's Gate and Dolby Vision and you still get the nice brights of HDR with the lows of the lower end, but I just think that the color is is more saturated. It's It's more balanced and you don't get much of that dimming happening in the UI either. So it's very similar to True Black while also giving you better color, I think, with Dolby Vision. So that is why I prefer it when ever viewing HDR content or playing games, I have Dolby Vision enabled. A main reason why it looks similar to HDR True Black is that when you go into the advanced display settings, you can see that it is peaking around 500 nits. So it's a nice in-between between Peak 1000 and True Black at 400, 500 is a good middle ground. To summarize, it is essential that you upgrade the firmware on this monitor first to reduce bugs and get the most up-to-date features. It's preferred that you update your graphics card drivers, whether that be Intel, Nvidia, or AMD. If you want the most dramatic, best HDR that you can, set it to HDR Peak 1000 and do a color calibration in Windows. If that is too much for you and you want a more balanced look, use HDR True Black while doing the Windows calibration. And if you want even more balance with HDR and color, use Dolby Vision Game or Rights and also do an HDR Windows calibration. If you want the most accurate color, so you're doing color professional work, don't enable HDR. Keep it in SDR and use the standard profile because that is going to give you the most accurate colors. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your comments down below with your feedback as always. I'll respond as quickly as I can. Leave a like if you like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.